Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Landon Hunt. I am a professional musician based here in Nashville, Tennessee. I've been in town for about seven years and gigging professionally for the past four. So today I wanted to talk about the most important piece of gear that I currently own. That is the Fractal Audio FM3. As you can see here, this thing is pretty small. It fits in most backpacks. It's smaller than most guitar pedal boards. And yet this thing is extremely powerful. It's a full amp modeler and effects processor. I want to go ahead and share just about my experiences with this thing before I jump into all the features. I've used it on the Today Show. I've used it three times on the Grand Ole Opry stage. I've used it on large indoor and outdoor stages, both extremely hot, uh, you're talking like 100 degrees, ex exposed directly to the sunlight, and extremely cold stages, like 30 to 40 degrees. I've used it in small clubs with a speaker, like a PA speaker or a FR, FR cab. And I've used it in like acoustic settings too, a solo acoustic church gig where I had to play just like 30 minutes of instrumental Christmas music. I've also used it uh, accompanying a singer just playing acoustic. So all that to say, I have quite a bit of experience using this thing and kind of knowing what it's capable of. And yet I'm still learning just about every time I sit down with it, just what more this thing can do. So just a rough overview of some of the basic features of this unit. It has over 280 realistic amp models. It has over 2,220 IR cabinets, and it's got space for up to 1,024 user cabs where you can go online, you can purchase other people's cab models, or you can uh, download a lot of them for free. One thing that this unit does not have that I'd like to distinguish first off is that it does not have a modeling section like the Kemper does where you can you know, plug in a microphone and model your favorite amp or cab at home. But all that to say, it has over 280 amps and they're constantly adding new models as they release new firmware updates. I wanna say since I bought this unit three years ago, they've added a substantial amount of amps, at least like 20 or 30, which I can get just about any sound that I could possibly imagine. Uh, so there's that to consider too. This uh, unit also has a USB out for recording. So if you don't have like an audio interface, you can just plug a USB cable out of this unit directly into your computer. You can set the inputs and outputs on your computer and then plug your headphones into the FM3 and basically it acts as an audio interface. You can play back music through it. You can jam along to songs. You can record through it. It's in stereo too. It's, it's nuts. It's really powerful. So like if you're just on the road and all you got is your FM3 and maybe a laptop you can plug in and practice along to songs. So I want to go briefly over how to use this live, or at least in my experience, how I use it live and everyone's experience is going to be subjective, but there's, there's multiple ways to split up the pedals on this, or, you know, you can program them to do whatever you want, but there's multiple views rather. So for artist gigs where I'm playing like a set list, like a 60 minute set, I like to program everything in scenes. Basically what you have is like a preset. It can be whatever you want it to be, but for the sake of an artist set in my situation, I would name the preset whatever song. So for example, I play with this girl, Callista Clark. She has a song called Real To Me. This is a great example because I use four scenes for this. So uh, the first scene, I just use uh, reverb. It's for like the verses. It's just got a little bit of, I think it's spring or hall reverb. I'd have to look at it. So that's just for the verses. And then going into the chorus, I hit the next button, which is delay plus verb. So I'm just holding out like some diamonds over the chorus with some like light arpeggios over it. And then the solo is uh, split in two if you listen to the album. So there's the album solo and then we add another solo live. And so for the sake of the solo on the album, I want to try to get that sound. It's like a octave type overdrive. So I've programmed like a octave overdrive in the fractal. It turns on and then when I hit the next solo button, it turns it to just like a normal, I can't remember what it was either. I think it's like a, a tube screamer to just get more of just a, a normal solo tone. But basically all of this I have programmed so that when I hit a button, it just does this all for me. It's not like I have to think about pedal tapping and, you know, dialing in certain tones for each song, but I just already have it programmed so that way I can just go and not have to think about it. The other way I run this unit is with the effects mode, and you should look into getting the FC6 foot controller if you're going to go this route, I would say. Also, if you can handle just having three effects on your unit and just banking up and down because you can you can bank up and down these three buttons to the next page it's just a little bit more pedal tapping but the effects view is is how you'd run it more like a traditional pedal board 
And I use this for gigs where maybe there's not a set list per se, like say I'm playing uh, downtown on Broadway, where any number of songs could be called for four hours, and I just need to have kind of a wide array of sounds that I can use. So what I'll usually use for this is I have like a, for, so for Broadway, for example, I have a rock patch where I run a Mesa Dual Rectifier, and then I have a country and pop preset where I run a, uh, a Fender Tremolux. This gives me a couple options, and I can quickly bank between those two presets, and they have different effects on them that I can use so like for the the country one slash pop if I'm trying to you know get some grit I can just turn on an overdrive and I have like a solo boost which is just literally just a clean volume boost that bumps up my volume like four and a half decibels or you know however much you want it to bump up but that's that's what I use for mine I've got a delay and I've even programmed the FC6 unit to where I can hold down the delay button and it'll switch to a different channel which is like a slapback delay which is great for country and then I've got a reverb and then I can also set like a longer reverb if I want to hold that one to bank to the next reverb channel, tremolo, phaser, stuff like that. I also want to talk about another thing with playing live that I've learned uh, recently in the past couple years, and it's something that was kind of a why I've kept my real amp. I only have one real amp currently, which is a deluxe reverb, but I don't even use it anymore because I figured out a way to use the fractal in all gigging situations. So like one thing you probably think about is uh, playing in a small club. So if you're just playing in a small club, there's not much room on stage, and you just run your fractal direct in well you're only going to get volume through the PAs, but if someone's standing right next to the stage, they're not going to really hear anything because there's no amp on stage. So I've remedied this by buying a PA speaker. I use a Yamaha DXR10, which is a little bit more expensive. And honestly, if I had known about some of the FRFR cabs out there, I probably would have gone that route because they're much more affordable. There's a Headrush speaker. I think it's either 10 or 12 inches that is just super loud. You have plenty of headroom to get as loud as you need to, and it pushes air, and it feels like a real amp, and it sounds great. It just sounds like whatever you have your fractal preset program to. But another tip too is if you don't want to lug a speaker down to your gig and they have a house amp there, you can just run a quarter inch out of your uh, second output and run that into the amp. And it's not going to sound like just like whatever uh, preset you have because ultimately you are playing through a power amp. Like, it's whatever that amp is going to sound like. It might sound kind of grimy. It might not sound super clean or what you would want it to sound like. But for the sake of not bringing a speaker with you, it, it still gets that stage volume. And ultimately, your your real tone that you've programmed is going to be coming through the house. So it just gives, uh, it gives you something on stage to kind of push some air and to make it feel like there's sound happening on stage. Because there is. It's just not going to sound the best, maybe to your ears, but people out front are not going to be able to tell the difference, which is super cool, and it's a tip that I just recently started incorporating uh, within the past few months. I also want to talk about running stereo versus mono for live. From what I've found, it doesn't really matter if you run stereo. A lot of times, most people in the crowd aren't going to be able to tell, but if you've got stereo in-ears and you've got stereo effects running, I strongly recommend running stereo if they have the inputs out front, which they should. It sounds so much bigger and fuller in the ears and if nothing else it helps me play better because my tone just sounds so good uh, when it's in stereo versus just mono mono's fine too and i use mono a lot for playing cover gigs and pretty much in any situation where i'm not running ears and it's super easy if you have like your presets are programmed to be stereo say you've got like a stereo tape delay or a digital stereo delay running you can just go to your settings quickly and set your io to sum left and right so it's going to um, just turn whatever stereo it's just going to put all your stereo effects right down the middle and it doesn't sound as good obviously but it still works and like people aren't gonna be able to tell out front and you can also just keep it running in stereo and just like run out of the right side or something like that it's not going to be much of a difference uh, if you do it that way. One thing I also didn't mention is that I use this thing exclusively for recording as well. Uh, it sounds incredible and it even has a feature uh, of reamping, which you can do that with real amps too, but it's super intuitive to be able to do it in the fractal. Basically, I don't, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but you can set like a different input and output uh, when you're recording and you can basically record a dry signal in with no amp modeling, no processing, no effects, and be monitoring, like while you're playing, you're listening to whatever amp 
that you want to listen to, whatever effects you want to listen to. So you can play confidently with whatever tone you have, but also knowing that you're recording a completely dry signal that you can go back in later and reamp. Basically change your tone to whatever you want by just running it back through the fractal. And if you'd like to see a video showing you how to do this, I would love to. Just let me know if that's something that anyone would be interested in. Thank you so much for watching this video. I would love to make more content relating to the fractal or general life advice. I've learned a lot of things living in Nashville for this time, and I'd love to share some of my experiences. So maybe you could learn from some of my mistakes and just learn ways to make yourself more marketable as a professional musician. Everyone has a different perspective and I think it's important to listen to what everyone has to say and that's kind of what I've done. And I certainly don't have all the answers, but I have some experience and my experience is just as valid as the next person's. So uh, be sure to subscribe below and uh, let me know what kind of content you wanna see in the future, whether it's more fractal related content, more guitar instructional videos, life advice, etc. Anyways, thank you for watching.